So who is Rodney Mullen, and how did he change skateboarding forever? To answer that question, let's go back to 1986 Oceanside, California. Rodney's a teenager. You see, before Rodney, it was essentially just a skateboard trick, and then a setup for another trick, and then a setup. And there was no real transitional flow in between the tricks. When Rodney came on the scene, though, it just almost became like watching something magical, just the way he would flow in between his tricks. Here we see Rodney performing the flat ground ollie. This one innovation is what allowed street skating to happen. It allowed you to use your environment in a way you just couldn't before. You could get over obstacles, you could get on top of rails and slide. And as the stunts got bigger and bigger, Hollywood began to take notice. And with all the money to be made in 1980s skateboarding, it would only make sense we'd get some good Hollywood films like Gleaming the Cube, and here we see a young Thanos in the movie Thrashing. As cheesy as some of these films are, they really did a huge part in putting skateboarding on the map. Because now skateboarding is in the theaters. It's at your grocery store in the kids' aisle. It's at your big box store selling skateboards. It's in your favorite TV shows when you're watching advertisements. It was there. Before it was just kind of in your local park and a few magazines, but it was now on the map. <gasps> now the Hollywood films are far from all bad. Like this one in particular is called The Lords of Dogtown. Great cinematography, writing, acting. Just a wonderful film, really, really well done. And at the heart of a lot of these films is just some really amazing skateboard stunt work performed by Rodney Mullen. You can tell right here by the way he kind of Frankensteins his hands during the spin that this is him in the scene in Gleaming the Cube. Another thing about Rodney is he doesn't talk like a typical athlete. You can actually understand what he's saying and he's a little bit like Socrates on a skateboard when you listen to him talk. A lot of people don't fall as much as we do in every level. And where falling becomes normal. And picking yourself up again is normal. There's some TED Talks and a few speeches at different universities. There's also um, some free lunches on the Ride Channel with Tony Hawk. Uh, if you get a chance to check him out, you should really listen to some of his philosophy. He's got a lot of wisdom. And to think, we came really close to never seeing Rodney's skateboarding talent. His father didn't believe in skateboarding as a profession. He probably changed his mind really quick and Rodney sold his company for $20 million though. But just think, had there never have been a Rodney Mullen, there never would have been a flat ground ollie. If there never was a flat ground ollie, then there would never be street skating. If there was never street skating, there would never be any Tony Hawk pro skater. There'd never be any X Games or all of the skate parks that are all over the United States now. None of these things would have ever happened. None of those great 80s films that really exposed the culture to this new activity known as skateboarding. None of it would have happened if it weren't for Rodney Mullen, the godfather of skateboarding.